MLB is less than a week upon us, and boys, I got some information for you, so make sure to watch this whole video. Yo, what's going on, Leaf Nation? It's Leaf, we're back again, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are doing, um, at least my opinions on cards to invest on in MLB. Now, before we get into this video, to the returning subscribers, hi, you know who I am already. Uh, thank you for for watching once again. Uh, to the potential new viewers are, that are here, hi, my name is uh, Leifer or Nick. I am a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, a huge Toronto Maple Leafs fan, if you can't tell from the whole backdrop here. I'm also a huge um, Toronto Blue Jays fan and baseball fan, and I thought uh, it is time to start making some MLB content. So, um, yeah. Here we are, and uh, let's get into this video. Okay, so like I said, today's video is going to be me going through every card that I think um, is going to have some huge upgrades. Um, so pretty much, I'm trying to help you guys make some stubs um, straight out the bat in MLB. Not straight away, obviously, you're going to wait for these guys to play well, like I think they will, and get their upgrades. So I'm going to drop a few names. I got some different categories of players, so let me get through that. The first category is obviously going to be my bias opinion. I think... Um, like all of its bias but team bias if that makes sense uh we then have our rookies and then we do have um our obvious guys and then uh potentially the off the radar types so uh quickly we are gonna go through the rookies or not the rookies my team bias here so obviously as a blue jays fan Bo bichette just comes to mind for me um again these are just guesses um, so I have a feeling Bo Bichette's going to start off as a silver and I think he's going to progress to a diamond. I mean, it's Bo Bichette, man. Um, he's a great young player to look out for as I assume he will be a silver, like I said, at the start of the year and make his way to a diamond. Um, this player is one of the faces of the franchise in Toronto and is projected to do very well this season given his year from last year. Um, Bo, he's not only a great hitter, but he uh, plays some pretty good defense. He's obviously still progressing. The guy's only 22. Um, but that would obviously help him towards his upgrade. Um, now, in the first couple games of the season, um, he hit two bombs in one game against the Rangers, I believe it was. Um, I think, you know, invest your stubs into Bo Bichette. I think he's an easy um, silver to diamond, if not gold, but I can see him going to diamond. Next player is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I mean, you know, Bo Bichette was going to be in this, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going to be in this. So, um, Vlad is by far one of the most powerful hitters in this league. I mean, if you watch any Blue Jay game, um, if you're a baseball fan in general, if you've seen this guy play, you know this guy looks to crush balls, and when he does, man, he hits them with power. Um, if last year's Vlad did not convince you of that, um, wait till this year. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. In his first game with the Blue Jays played this year, um, he um, was looking to destroy every ball that was coming his way. Um, in the single he hit on opening day against the Yankees, um, he had an exit velocity uh, from that hit that was 114.1 uh, miles per hour. Um, so if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. Also, for what it's worth, Vlad lost over 40 pounds this offseason and uh, was said to and was quoted saying he's felt stronger than ever. So, I mean, um, a skinny Vlad is um, a very good Vlad. So for Vlad, I can see him going from a silver to a high gold, maybe creeping his way into diamond, but for what it's worth, I have him from silver going to a high gold. Now we're moving on to the rookies. We have Bobby Dell Beck. I have him going from a bronze to a low gold. So, um, I mean, a bronze to a low gold, that is a huge upgrade and someone I would invest stubs into. Um, Bobby Delbeck is one of the latest rookies to enter the show in his short playing time last season. Uh, he had 23 games, collecting 80 at-bats, 21 hits, 8 of those were home runs. He had a batting average of .263 and 16 ribbies. Um, Bobby Delbeck also had a great spring training. Um, he had 47 at-bats, scored 15 runs with 14 hits, um, and also had 7 home runs. Um, now, I know this is a short sample size from what we saw from Delbeck. But those stats look to be very good and promising um, and from a young kid entering the league. Next, we got Cabrian Hayes. Um, he's another rookie, obviously. That just looks too good to be true, man. Um, let's just say it looks like the Pirates have a gem of a player coming to the league, man. It's absolutely unreal. Um, in 24 games played in the 2020 season, Hayes uh, had a batting average of 376, uh, 17 runs, 11 RBIs, and 5 home runs. Um, he also had an on-base percentage of 442, so this guy gets on base a lot. Um, Hayes also followed up with a great spring training performance. Um, he had played 17 games, 
um, with 22 hits, 9 runs, and 2 home runs. He had a batting average of 431, which is high up there, and an on-base percentage of 463. Um, so as you can see, this is a great young player, like I said. Um, he is great at getting on base and collecting runs. It's just as simple as that. Um, he's also noted to be a great defensive player. Um, in Hayes' opening day, he already hit his first home run of the season. Um, and I predict, like I said, I predict, uh, or I haven't said it, I predict he's going to go from a bronze to a dime, a huge upgrade for Cabrian Hayes, um, someone I would definitely um, invest stubs into. All right, next rookie, we got Dylan Carlson. I have him going from a bronze to a diamond, another bronze to diamond rookie. Um, in um, his just started out young career, Carlson has played 35 games in the show and those 35 games he collected 22 hits three home runs and 16 rbis he had a batting average of 200 and on base percentage of 252 in spring training carlson followed up those 35 games with some more great performances he played in 17 games collecting seven runs 11 hits two home runs and eight rbis he had a batting average of 239 and an on base percentage of 327 um carlson should have a good um spot a hitting spot in the cardinals lineup hitting before or after paul goldschmidt or Nolan Arenado. Um, he's also a switch hitter with high power, which is very, uh, obviously very good. Will help him uh, with his upgrades. Um, when Carlson makes contact, it's a high exit velocity and he has an elite barrel percentage. So his underlying numbers say he should be producing a lot better. So again, another card I'd invest stubs in. I see him going from a bronze to a diamond. Right, we're hitting up the next category of the obvious guys here. Uh, first one is Randy Arizarina. Uh, I have him going from a high silver to a high gold. Uh, Randy has been in the league for two years now. Um, in those two years, he's had 84 at bats. Um, so a small, smaller sample size with this player, but in those 84 at bats, he's collected 24 hits, eight home runs, and 13 RBIs. He has an on-base percentage of 384 and a batting average of 286. Um, Randy also had an amazing postseason with the Tampa Bay Rays in 2020, setting a single postseason record of 10 home runs. Had a had an amazing. Um, um, postseason with the Rays and he had a decent uh, spring training following that up with 15 games played he had nine hits three runs one RBIs and he did not hit any dingers um, but this is the type of player where you expect him to have a good season given what he had done in the past postseason um, so yeah that's why I have him going from a high silver to a high gold next guy we have on our list is Dansby Swanson he made a name for himself in the five years he's played in Atlanta uh, five years Dansby um, had uh, 1,800 115 at bats collecting 542 hits 50 home runs and 227 rbis over his career um he had held a 249 batting average and a 321 on base percentage uh, swanson had a pretty good 2020 season collecting 65 hits in 60 games along with 35 rbis and 10 home runs now even though dansby isn't the greatest uh, long ball hitter um, he is able to get on base a lot of the time um, and create scoring chances for his team or runs for his team um, this is why i have dan speed swanson um, having the potential to go from a low silver to a high gold um, so a guy that a little riskier to invest your stubs in but uh, you could flip a profit off of Dansby Swanson. This guy we have is Kyle Lewis. Kyle Lewis is a guy I have going from an average silver to a low gold. In his young two-year career, he has had 277 at-bats with 73 hits, 17 home runs, and 41 RBIs. He followed up his first two seasons with a pretty good spring training, if I do say so myself. In 14 games, he had 11 hits, 7 RBIs, and 1 home run. Uh, he also had a batting average of 297 and an on-base percentage of 386. Kyle Lewis also won Rookie of the Year in 2020. Um, he has a bright future and I have a strong feeling that he will follow up his rookie um, his rookie of the year season with another great season. Um, so again, a guy that I can see uh, flipping you a little decent profit with uh, stubs. All right, so moving on to the next obvious guy, Shohei Otani. Um, I have him going, um, potentially starting off as a high bronze slash low silver, silver to a diamond. Um, I mean, it's Shohei Otani, man. Um, he's a guy that you can bet on getting an easy upgrade, in my opinion, and making you some easy stubs. Otani is not only a pitcher, uh, but he's a designated hitter with the Los Angeles Angels. Um, he has some pretty crazy stats. He's a guy who can pitch um, and hit. You can expect him to have some pretty crazy games, causing him to have more upgrades as the year goes on. So, um, yeah, good bet to have on Shohei Otani. I think it's pretty safe to say he'll make you some stubs. Now moving on to Yohan Moncada. Um, he is a vet in this league. Um, he's been playing in the show for six years and going on seven now. 
and uh, he has some pretty good career stats if I have to say so myself. Last year Moncada had 200 at bats, uh, collecting him 45 hits, 28 runs, 24 RBIs, and 6 home runs. He also had a pretty good spring training collecting 16 hits, 8 runs, 4 RBIs, and 1 home run. Um, I have a feeling Moncada will have a great year with the White Sox this year and I can see him going from a silver to a diamond. I know, I know you guys are probably thinking maybe a gold. I can see him going to diamond. Um, so yeah, if you have the stubs for it, um, you go for it. Next we have Alec Bohm. We have him going from a bronze to a low gold. So uh, he just had his first year in the majors in 2020. Um, he had a pretty good first season, um, collecting 106 at bats with 54 hits, 24 runs, 23 RBIs, and four home runs. Um, I can see Bohm having an even better season this time around with the Phillies. Um, he also had a pretty hot start to spring training, which just shows how ready he is for the season. Um, it's his second year, and I can only see Bohm wanting to improve and get better. And I can see him having um, a similar year, if not better, so I can see him going from a bronze to a low gold easily. Next, we have my main man, Marcus Stroman, the Stro Show, the former Blue Jay. Love this guy when he was here. Um, he opted out last season, so uh, he's playing this year um, in a contract year as well. And he played five games in spring training, collecting two wins in those five games with an ERA of 344 and had 17 strikeouts as well. I can see Stroman having a great first full year with the New York Mets. Um, Stroman entered spring training hitting a fastball uh, exit velocity of 93 to 94 miles per hour. Um, later commenting saying, I've never seen my exit velo hit that high straight away. Um, so this just goes to show you how ready the Stroh Show is for the season. I can easily see him going from a silver to a gold. So look out for Marcus Stroman. A little bias in this one, but yeah, I mean, who doesn't love the Stroh Show? Next we have Austin Riley. Um, I can see his card going from a bronze to a high silver maybe even a potential low gold depending on how good he does this season um riley had a pretty good season last year playing 51 games with the braves collecting eight home runs and 27 rbis he followed that up with a pretty good spring training where he had 10 hits seven rbis and two home runs um riley is a player who can hit the ball very hard um he's also a very dynamic player who can play left field first base and third base so like I said, very dynamic. You can play anywhere on the uh, baseball diamond. So again, I have him from a bronze to a high silver slash so, uh, low gold. Um, so that's another um, obvious guy where I can see him getting a pretty good upgrade uh, this season. All right, on to the last category, the off the radar type cards here. So we got Mike Soroka. I have him going from a silver to a diamond potentially. Um, Soroka is the first off the radar player that we're going to be talking about here. Um, in three years, we've seen a, sol a small, a very small sample size from Soroka, but from what we've seen, um, it looks pretty good, guys. Um, he is 15 and six in his career with 171 strikeouts um, and an ERA of 286. Um, he had a small sample size in spring training as well. He just came off a uh, season-ending Tommy John surgery, so he's getting back into it. Uh, but uh, this guy um, is a guy if he is fully recovered and healthy. Um, can be a guy who stands out and has a great season causing him to upgrade so um, look for him um, silver to a diamond I'm calling it next we have Kendall Marte um, he's another off the radar guy that we're gonna be talking about I can see him potentially going from a silver to a diamond as well um, he had a great he's he's had a great career sorry um, in the seven years that he's played um, last year he had 45 games collecting 52 hits 17 RBIs um, and two home runs um, he had a batting average of 287 and an on-base percentage of 323. Um, Marte uh, also had a strong spring training where he collected 14 hits, 6 RBIs, and 2 dingers. Um, his batting average for spring training was 341 and his on-base percentage was 449. So some pretty high numbers um, in the spring training. Um, now I know those numbers, like I said, are super high um, and was in a span of like 15 games. Um, but if Marte can keep up uh, similar numbers, um, even if they drop a little bit, um, I can see him easily um, making his way up to a diamond. Next, we got Paul DeYoung. Um, what can I say? I see him going from a silver to a high gold. So I can see Paul DeYoung having a 30 home run season, in my opinion. I can 100% see that. Uh, last year, he had 40. He played in 45 games, uh, collecting 38 hits, 17 runs, three home runs, and 25 RBIs. Um, Paul is not only a great um, on the offensive side of uh, baseball. But he is also one of the best defensive shortstops in the league. So it's an easy bet that you can see him going from a silver to a high gold. Um, yeah, I guess an easy way to make stubs possibly on this card. 
All right, last but not least, we have Brady Singer. Uh, Brady Singer is a player where I can see him having a surprising season where he could upgrade from a bronze to a low gold, in my opinion. Um, last year, in his first year, he collected four wins, uh, had 61 strikeouts, and an ERA of 406. A little high up there, but um, like I said, I can see him having a very good season. Um, like I said, I've seen him having a good season. You know, last year was his f first year, right? Now he knows the league a little bit better, even though... Um, circumstances were different last season but he knows the league a little bit better I can see him doing a bit better and having more confidence in my opinion in his spring training games he started four games um, and collected two wins um, he also had an ERA of 265 which is way better uh, than the ERA he collected in the 2020 season uh, again small sample size in spring training but you can see the numbers going down um, now this is a player where you are risking your stubs but if he performs and get and he gets the upgrade I'm predicting, you're going to get a very nice profit of stubs. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, uh, all these guys that I'm giving you are pretty much, um, you know, you're risking it. Like I, I'm, I'm not, I can't, I can't see into the future. But I'm just trying to give you guys some insight on who to uh, potentially, um, you know, invest your stubs into early on in the year so you can flip a profit. Now, again. I, I hope I'm able to help you guys with that. I think I am. I, I can see a lot of these guys upgrading the way I've been describing them. So, um, you know, take my advice if you want. And if you make some coins, or coins, I'm talking as a hub player. If you make some stubs, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I hope I was able to help some of you guys out in this video. Uh, that's what I'm here for. That's what I tried doing in this video. So, um, guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to drop a like on it. If you guys are new around here, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. We're on the road to 4,000 subscribers. And, guys, we are, what, less than a week or maybe a week away um, from the MLB uh, 21 early release. Um, I cannot wait for the game. I cannot wait to start grinding content on the channel for it. And I hope you guys are ready for some MLB videos. Um, but, yeah, like I said, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys very much for watching. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.